What is up guys, Mini Luck here, and today we're about to talk about the part three of Applied Energistics mod. So, some new cool stuff. Uh, first thing we have up is the, the P2P uh, tunnel, or peer-to-peer -peer tunnel. So this is very cool if you want to transfer liquids, items, redstone from one point to another, and it's pretty versatile. You can do a lot, a lot of different things. I'm going to show you guys the basic setup for a few different things, and then uh, we'll see what happens. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, let's let's go ahead and set up a using the new thermal expansion. Let's set up a ender tank, and uh, what you got to do to set your peer to peer tunnel, you either have to click it with a hopper, redstone, or a water bucket for different types of things. There's other types of things like this. Uh, besides this, you can have it transfer energy or whatever else you want. So let's right click it with a water bucket. Actually, I'm going to kill that real quick. And you see it's normally white, but if you right click it with a water bucket, it turns that. If you right click it with redstone, it turns red. You right click it with a hopper, it turns dark gray. And then MJ's, you can right click it with whatever, or you know, it, it does a few different extra things. So what we're gonna do is we're going to turn it blue. We want to transfer liquids. We're gonna stick a fluid duct here. And then I'm not sure if I talked about the bus memory card, but you can actually shift right click anything like export buses, import buses, storage buses. And what it does is it saves the memory. So for example, if you have a storage bus set up to hold cobblestone and stone, whatever else, you can actually save the memory, right click it on other storage buses, and it'll copy and paste that memory to whatever other uh, storage buses you want. So we're gonna right click, save it to memory, and then we are going to right click it and load from memory. So now this one and that one are connected. So let's uh, let's put some uh, fluid ducts right here and put an empty a empty thing right there, and let's go ahead and set this to go ahead and set this over here to automatically push out. We can also set that too. As you see, what it's doing is it's actually draining the water from this, going from the the peer to peer tunnel here all the way over to this one and filling this up. So you can, you know, do this. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, I think one of my favorites is probably the redstone one. So let's go ahead and set one of those up. So let's say, for example, you want to send a redstone signal from something that does something to another thing. And we're going to set that to red. And then we're going to save the settings. Move over here, and let's say we wanted to connect out of here. Let's say we wanted to send a redstone signal somewhere else. So then we can load the settings, and as you see, the redstone signal carries through. It's very, very neat. Um, also, another thing you can do is with items. So let's go ahead and set up another one right here, and then let's let's take our hopper, for example, and right-click that, and then let's click the hopper into there. And this, I think, uh, there's a bunch of different items you can use for this. If you want the official list, then you can go uh, just Google a P2P tunnel, uh, Applied Energistics or ME P2P tunnel, and it'll show you all the list of all the different things you can do. So we got that set up, and then let's send a, I don't know, a piece of redstone right there. And then let's put this one, we'll set it right here. Oh, We'll set it right there and then we'll take a chest and we'll put it right here so one thing I didn't do is I didn't actually save this to settings so let's shift right click that and right click this and you'll notice now the piece of redstone is right here so no redstone oh oh I accidentally deleted the settings here <laughs> Okay, so there we go. So you notice, n no redstone. I guess it didn't work. Maybe I clicked the wrong thing. Well, whatever, you get the gist. Um, <laughs> it worked a second ago, I'm, I'm just doing something stupid. Anyways, this is going to be used a lot of variety of different things, and it's pretty cool. Um, if you want to just specifically send an item from one location to another, a redstone signal from one location to another, different types of liquids from whatever to whatever, you could even set this to send liquids from far away 
and then have it store inside of a railcraft tank or something using this. So it's pretty powerful. You can do a lot of different things with it. Like I said, if you guys want an official list, then look it up. Next thing we're going to cover is the, the spatial pylons. So a few things you're going to need for the spatial pylons is you're going to need an energy cell. One of these spatial storages, you can pick whichever one you want. Uh, this stores up to 128 by 128 by 128, 16 by 16 by 16, 2 by 2 by 2. Um, spatial pylons and spatial I.O. ports. So the way this works is spatial pylons actually store a 3D space. So anything inside that 3D space gets stored inside of these drives. That could be entities, that could be players, that could be blocks, that could be liquid, it could be anything. So I, I don't know exactly what you could use this for, as I'm sure there's plenty of smarter, smarter people out there than me, but um, I'm sure you could do some crazy things with this. I saw someone make a, uh, a, a player entity storage, and like you're actually inside of, when you store yourself, you're inside of another um, dimension, and you can't move or anything, and it's called the um, storage storage biome or something I don't know something <laughs> weird so what you need to do is uh, you need to run cable to wherever you want to store your 3d space at and then you need to set up um, spatial pylons so let me fix this real quick and you want your spatial pylons just like you're setting up a quarry you want it to be outside of your edge here of what you want so we can set up these two right here and then run cable all the way across to these right here. And then now they're now connected. So the next thing you're gonna need is a spatial IO port. And then you're also going to need um, one of these drives. So for demonstration state, state little uh, whatever, I'm gonna stick in the biggest drive right here. And then uh, we're going to stick a few more pylons on here. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention that you can only have one of these per network. So, <laughs> yeah, so you can only have one of these per network. Um, so, for example, uh, if I wanted to, let's see, let's let's go ahead and kill this because this isn't going to get all of it. If I wanted to store this item right here, let's go ahead and set this up. And you'll notice I would I don't even need this. I just need these two. You can look up in the spatial I/O port, and it'll say your efficiency is thirty-six per six point three percent. Uh, required AE energy would be 7,100. Available AE energy is 1,200. I can change. I can change the power units to build craft, and it'll say required uh, 1,400 MJs. Available 2,000 MJs. Um, required 3,500 EU. Available 6,000 EU. Uh, universal electricity, rotary, craft watts, and it goes back to applied energistic. So this tells you what you need and what you have available. So right now, and it says efficiency 36.6, .6, but you can boost efficiency by adding more pylons. So I can boost the efficiency right here. And we'll notice right here, efficiency went from 36 to 54, and it requires um, less energy than it did before. Now I can put another pylon here. Of course, I'm going to have to connect it to the network. Now you'll see efficiency is up to 72.2 and requires 2,500 uh, AE. Um, you can, of course, uh, pylons cannot be touching. I can do this and it will completely break the formation. They cannot be touching. I can put a pylon right here and you'll notice it goes down to 180 or 842 AE. Uh, available, you know, 10,000 efficiency, 90%. I can do another one right here. Efficiency, 100% um, AE, and for some reason, this goes up to even more. I think that might be a bug right there. I'm not 100% sure. But the next thing you want to do is grab a lever right here, place it on this, and then you just flip it once. Hmm, maybe that ruined everything. 
I don't know. Here we go. Okay, so let's flip it once. Oh, maybe I already... I think I already had stuff stored in that, that's why. So let's look up spatial storage. Let's just grab a 16 and get rid of these guys. Stick the 16 in here, and then... Hmm. Why you no work? Why you no work? Oh, probably because this isn't powered. I forgot. Okay, so the next part you need is you actually need energy cells. So uh, you take energy cells and it's used to power the I.O. port. So. There you go. You guys saw it. So. You'll notice. That uh, it stored those blocks inside of this 3D space. On top or inside of this drive. So now that we're refilled back up. It, you see it sapped all the energy and it put the pillar back into this 3D space. So, for example, <laughs> this is going to be bad. Uh, for example, I don't think I'll be able to get out of here. No, I don't think I'll be able to get, be able to get out of here. But whatever, this is for uh, demonstrations. Fake. For example, Oh, maybe I have to get a new drive. Uh, let's see. Let's delete that. Then let's get another spatula. I'm doing this for you guys because this would this is going to suck. I'm not going to be able to get out of here ever. I'm going to be stuck in here forever. I'll be in the freaking like matrix. Oh, what's happening? Okay, I'm inside of a storage cell. Oh, and yeah, you can actually move around. So I'm in... Oh, no, no. I can only move around in this uh, tiny 3x3 three three space. So I'm stuck in the storage cell forever. Can I place stuff in here? Oh god. Oh god. I can place Yes, I can make myself my own little house. Let's get some glowstone up in here. Glowstone, no. Glowstone. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, but um <laughs> I can I can map out my 3D home new 3D home now. Yes, yeah, so this is my new 3D home. And that's it. <laughs> So hopefully, uh, you, I don't know why you'd want to come in here or store entities in here, but it's, it is kind of funny. You could store like the Ender Dragon in here or whatever. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is the end of the AE Spotlight. So the, I have covered absolutely everything in the mod over about an hour and a half. And uh, yeah, I think I did a pretty awesome job. If I did, I would love it if you guys could smash the crap out of that like button. Give me some love. If you guys have any questions, then comment down below. I love your faces, and I will see you guys next time. Actually, guys, I figured out the perfect idea for this location. You make like a 5x5x5 five by five by five cube, wither fight for days. <laughs> yeah, you just, me and German, we're going to make this in our LP. We're going to make this, and then fight, or I'm going, one of us is going to fight in here. That way, the, or we'd both be trapped in here forever. He's going to stay outside. I'm going to come in and fight. It's going to be epic. So, wither fight. Yup, they can't do anything about it. It's going to be amazing. Sword of the Zephyr, baby. Oh, yeah. So, you get some OP armor. Uh, they can't destroy anything. They're stuck in here forever. They can't fly off. What? How did he fly? Oh, no. Oh no, he, I just broke it! I just broke the sub-universe! And I died. Wow. How did I just break the sub... Subspace universe... In the Matrix. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys later.